Hi, welcome. This is Dr. John Martini. This is one of the most amazing and inspiring shows that you can listen into. If you want to be on the edge of your seats, if you want to open up your heart, if you want to expand your mind, and you want to meet incredible people, stay tuned because you're just about to experience a transformative radio show that will change your life. And you're listening to the Dr. Pat Show is coming up right next. Welcome to the Dr. Pat Show. Talk radio to thrive by. Powerful, inspiring, and coming to you live, bringing you stories of people like you and me, busting through and living life full out. Get ready to dare to wonder what your life would be like if you knew you could not fail. Hey, everybody, welcome. I've got a great show. I want you to really meet someone. Now, I know you've heard her show, The Dawn of Intuition, J.D. Dawn Kindred. I know you've heard this, but The Dawn of Intuition is a platform. It's a way to awaken to a new way of being. And so what I love about this is when I go back in time, how difficult it was to even have a conversation about the word intuition. The world we live in now is this place where more people like JD are coming out, they're coaching, they're teaching other people how to live a new way. So once upon a time, we used to call this a new narrative. That's not what this is. This is a new way of being. This is what she has been doing. She does it in a variety of ways. I mentioned the show, coaching program, retreats, whatever you want to know about this. This is something that is in every cell of her body. And by the way, it's in every cell of your body. You just don't know it. So what happens when you take the journey with somebody that can gain and help you gain insight, how to make decisions quicker, how to understand what that voice is within, how to know, do I go left? Do I go right? especially in the world we live in today, where you don't have five years to sit down and do a plan. Because if you take five years to look at your life and the plan, the minute you're done, that plan is outdated. Uh, JD, it's great to have you. Welcome to the show. We're going to talk intuition today. Yes, my favorite topic. I'm so happy to be back, Dr. Pat. You know, once upon a time, I remember when I first started this and I did a lot of shows on intuition and how confusing it was for people. But fast forward to where we are now. I think that folks are understanding the value of it. Also, we have reduced the what I used to perceive as a stigma around it. And there is magic associated by the voice that we hear, whatever that is for you, or what we see, or what you know, that way of being. There's a level of magic around it that will allow you to go from where you are today to where you want to go, free of pain, feeling great, and knowing that you don't have to look back. So let me talk to you about this. You are someone that has created a phenomenal platform. You're you're a coach that infiltrates the world of coaching with intuition every step of the way. But can you talk about one, why that was important for you to look at the world through the lens, that lens and what that means for the world of intuitive coaching from where you sit? Yes, I love how you use the word magic because our first show we did together was the magic of intuition. And I yes. really like living in that energy, the magic of life, it's so much more fun. So, you know, when we look at just the differences in coaching, like what is coaching? And I really see a value in, in, you know, I believe every coach has something unique to offer. And I often remind people like really look within before you choose a coach, because everyone has a different uh, flavor and a different technique and really choose, you know, trust your intuition when you choose a coach. And I also believe that coaching generally is, is limited to our logical mind and our goals and action plans and what we think we can achieve. Whereas I want people to step out and I often call it intuition coaching, but also empowerment coaching. I yeah. feel like I want to really be the biggest cheerleader for my clients and help them really look within to know their 
deepest, deepest desires and dreams and things they may forget because I feel like the logical mind is there to protect us, to keep us safe, to keep us comfortable. And that intuition just wants the best for us and really pushes us out of our comfort zones and makes us, you know, dream and and have more of a a dream life than we could have expected for ourselves. So that's kind of the coaching that I want to bring to, to the people I work with. And let's talk about how you've done that for yourself. Because when I think about, you know, we've done several shows before, I've gotten to know you. Um, you are somebody that has followed your own, let's say, walk the talk. You know, I tend to do that too. <clears throat> from From as far back as I can remember, there's no logic to the steps and the actions that I've taken in my life. When people analyze how I got here, they just don't get it. So I stopped trying to explain it. But when we look at what you've created, the retreats, your business, especially let's talk of intuitive business connections. There's something that you say on your website and you define coaching or the ICF defines coaching. And I love this. It's a partnering with clients in a thought provoking and creative creative process that inspires them to maximize their potential and professional potential. I don't know how you do that without tapping into intuition. Do you? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I don't either, you know, helping people see and reach their highest potential. And I think that's exactly what intuition is. It just wants the best for us in our life. I, I, you know, just to share stories, because I love teaching through storytelling. Yeah, me too. As do you. <laughs> Is, you know, recently, just the last couple guests that I had, I coached. And one was this really, really successful business, executive business coach. And I was a little bit intimidated. I was like, why would you choose to work with me, you know, for your, for your, your new business? And with his professional training, he learned through some courses he was taking, he learned that uh, like working intuitively is the highest level of mastery in business. And so he goes, you've attained that and I want to achieve that. And so I need to work with you. And I'm like, wow, like I was so nice to be validated by kind of an outside business source and course. And we really, you know, we were working on one area where his mind was telling him something, but yet I was listening to his, his, what he was really saying. I was listening to words he was saying that he wasn't even conscious that he was saying, and I would be able to like, you know, repeat back and point out everything he already knew and wanted. He's like, oh, I want to, I'm, I'm kind of lacking clarity in this and I'm confused about this. And and when he was speaking, he had a lot of clarity. He was just so stuck in his head about it. So I dropped him back into, you already have all your answers. Like, I'm not there to give anyone answers. My, my clients have all the answers within. I just like to remind them of that. Yeah, yeah people are so intuitive and they don't realize they're intuitive. Yeah. And so, yeah. We know that when two or more are gathered, amazing things happens. I mean, that we know. But also, I want to get back to something else you said. Somebody asked me, oh, I think it was about two weeks ago on a show about this. And I I hit a pause button. And you know, on air, when you go silent, people are like, what is wrong with her? Did she freeze up? No, because I had a different answer than I've answered before. So here's what I've said, and I'd love for you to comment about it. I said, look, there's not anything new about intuition. Here's what's new. You can go back thousands of years, even further, like thousands, like before BC, you can go back and you will see glyphs, hieroglyphs. You will see messages. You will see journals. You will see parchment. I don't care what you look at. And you will always find a story about somebody that knew, I'm just going to say knew, and then acted. Now, why is it popular now? Because 5,000 years ago, we didn't have the internet. We didn't have the fast pace. So why are we talking about this now? It's not new. It's fresh. It's to remind us that no matter how far back in time and history you go, 
story after story, leader after leader. I mean, even in our modern times, you know, President Obama's decision to go find somebody, a terrorist in the Middle East, that was based on fact, but it was based on gut. And so anytime you pick something up, ask yourself the question, every story you hear from Beyonce's uh, fabulous new album to Rihanna's billion dollar marketing business, ask yourself the question, do you think that was done based on pure logic? Or do you think these people got an insight? See, this is the difference now. But we don't know this. Isn't that your mission now? Because you're here to be the intuitive coach that is going to help people gain these insights that some of the more popular people have mastered, right? Mm. I love that word mission. And I feel I feel inspired to share something a little bit edgy with you on the show that I love edgy. I'm going to share something a little edgy that I feel like I've been working on this mission, as you say, for lifetimes. I don't think this is my first lifetime that I've been working on this project. And I feel like in this lifetime, I'm very lucky because there's an opening, you know, maybe a couple thousand years ago. Um, I would, I might, I don't know. I don't know all my past lives, but I might've been killed for saying the things I am saying today, which was just our innate knowledge. And now I'm so grateful that I'm able to be able to speak like on air about these, you know, out there topics that are not going to be that out there. You know, this is going to be a new reality. We're naturally moving into a new reality. Just yesterday, I was watching a show of how like, maybe, I don't know, let's say 10 years ago, meditation and yoga were so, you know, spiritual and woo woo. And now it's like a common thing. Like everyone goes to yoga, everyone does meditate, everyone meditates, like it's not even anything new anymore. So I think we're naturally moving into a new paradigm where this is normal, we're going to start closing off the chaos outside and focusing more inward and trusting more our own inner compass and wisdom like never before. So yeah, I feel this is really my mission this lifetime again. And I'm so happy and that I have this platform to be able to share. Yeah. yeah. With uh, and you know, you tapped into something. I want to, I want to ask a follow-up question because you know, many people don't understand the benefit of this. And thank you for bringing this up. People always ask me the question of, wow, well, Pat, we've heard you talk about the benefits of COVID. You know, are you really talking about that? And I come back and I say, when a woman in central New Jersey <clears throat> who has never taken herself to a yoga studio has understood through COVID and all of the online, thank you, Zoom, all of the online platforms to this day never misses her online yoga class four times a week. So it's not that people are afraid of it. They just didn't know. And one of, one of the blessings of COVID, I mean, COVID did a lot of things. The pandemic did a lot of things that are very painful. But what it did, it was broke down the doors of being able to learn in ways that we never had before. And I wanted to ask you about this because learning and tapping into the energies of intuition and intuitive coaching has many benefits. Can you talk to that from where you sit? Look, we all know that Steve Jobs and other people use their intuition, but here you are helping others create that same kind of creativity. What are the benefits of this for you? and for people? Well, I think there's, I think everyone can benefit from, from this. Um, for me, you know, I write a lot in my book, uh, intuitive business connections, yes. you know, um, uh, grow business from zero to six figures in an intuitive way. I started a company 13 years ago and I really had no idea what to do. And I just followed my intuition every step of the way. And I'm still in business today. And so, and I wrote it and I channel, I felt like I channeled that book uh, in two months with the most random stories, the most random intuition stories and lessons learned being an entrepreneur. And, and um, so, yeah, and this book is, it, you know, it talks about business. So people think it's really business related, but this book is for everyone. I've had like moms, you know, stay at home moms read it. 
professionals, students, anyone can read this book. It's a super light read, really fun stories about examples with intuition and business and money and, and you know, languages and travel. It really talks about everything. Um, but concretely, you know, how can this help? Um, I've worked with, just to share more stories, I worked with business owners and entrepreneurs who needed specific clarity in maybe their next business move or maybe marketing message or their goals. Sometimes we think we have one goal and then really deep down our truth is something very different, but we're very scared. It's very scary to actually speak our authentic truth. I often think that intuition is really living in like being intuitive is really being authentic because you are your authentic self when you are living an intuitive life, which can go against the grain. It can go against what your family want, what society mm -hmm. wants, what your boss wants. Like it, it, it takes courage. It definitely takes courage to step into your authenticity and live an intuitive life for sure. But I've also helped stay at home moms who have lost uh, joy and passion it's like, okay, well, let's go really deep within. And because I think in life, you know, joy is such a high vibration, you know, with Hawkins, uh, you know, um, scale of, of consciousness. Yes. Power he, versus uh, force. Yeah. yeah, from this book, you know, he talks about, you know, joy is a higher vibration than love. And so I used to think love, to live in love. Yeah. Is, but really it's to live in joy. So a lot of my coaching is like, I want people to live their most joyful lives possible. So we, we, we look at that through intuitive coaching. <clears throat> most recently, I helped a university student really become clear on the program she wanted to take. She's taking a PhD program and it's like, okay, that's a massive commitment. Like, I want you to be really clear on that. Also helping her dive deeper into beautiful, authentic, loving relationships, romantic relationships she's wanted. She's been manifesting relationships she hasn't wanted. So really getting clear, it's just helping people to have clarity, really having clarity in their life. And a lot of people, uh, when they are, they lack confidence in themselves. So then every decision they doubt, they second guess. But when you know, when you know how to follow your intuition and you know what that intuition, intuitive guidance feels like, it is so much easier to make decisions and to live uh, with courage and confidence and trust. So this is what I really love helping people with. I love that you're talking about this because, you know, this is, we're, you know, we're peeling back the layers of this, you know, in the conversation, dawn of, you know, intuition, dawn of this. And I love that you mentioned your book, right? Because people don't really realize the power of intuitive empowerment. They don't really understand that there is a level of empowerment and confidence and ease and flow and grace. And how do you compare it? I mean, ask yourself the question, how long did you just agonize over what movie you're going to go to? I'm just asking. Uh, how long you, did you agonize over whether or not you're going to go to on a vacation to Spain or Italy? I mean, you put your list together, the pros and cons, but you never checked in with your heart. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we can point to gazillions of scenarios over time where that final moment to add a shade of gray in the Sistine Chapel, that final moment to just sculpt that piece out of that, oh, what statue? The thinker. Just that moment that you were guided, that people were guided. The moment in your life where you woke up today and you knew something about what you were going to do to solve a problem at work. This is now a universal movement that you are heading up because <laughs> here's my next question. Do you think we're going to be able to apply the old way of being to the new world problems? Well, that's a big question. I think we all live in our own reality. <laughs> so for me, I cannot, I'm in, I live a different maybe reality than you, of course, and you live a very different reality than someone else. Um, the way 
I live my life is going to be very different than maybe the old paradigm of how things, well, I'm already trying to get out of, out of the old <laughs> paradigm the most I can, you know, but yeah. I'm sure people can still make it work because people will still make that work. And then people will choose a new way of being and living. And, and it's, it's up to everyone in their own journey of if they choose like what path they choose. Um, but yeah, I've, I've been trying to, be out of the old way for a long time. And I think entrepreneurship really helps like the entrepreneur. Yeah. Yeah. I have, I, mean, the, I, have the, I have the, I have the freedom to create my life. Like, Oh, I just hop, I hop, you know, on a plane and I can go anywhere and still earn income. And, um, you know, I don't know. I just, I, I'm really, I'm not bound by, um, yeah. Bound by, kind of the nine to five that a lot of people mm -hmm. have, have to live. Yeah. But also let's talk about this. Cause this is kind of cool. You know, see the difference is that there is a way of being that you're told, let's just talk about that paradigm. You know, let's talk about the nine to five paradigm. And, you know, even as an entrepreneur, what I had to break coming from corporate America. Okay. Come from corporate America. Yes. I went back to school, but I had 25 years in an, a, a mega 50, you know, Ford's 50 company, our general instructions book, there were 14 of them, three inches thick, right? So you come from that paradigm and now you start your own business. And it took me a while. Even today, I struggle with this. Uh, JD, I struggle with this today. It took me a while to realize I don't have to follow the same rules. So, just let me just give you an example. I realized that the best time for me as an owner of a company is not always to go in the office nine to five. It's not always, especially now when I'm in a growth mode and I have to meet with finances, meet with the bank, meet with possible investors. It's not always a good mode for me to go into the office and then drive two hours. So I had to adapt. Now, intuitively, I was very clear, set up a home office, do what you need to do intuitively. But let's talk about this when we come back from break. What, following that, what will get in the way of that? What helps us get to that joy factor, right? Because had I forced something, working nine to five, staying at the office 16 hours, you know, had I followed that old paradigm, would it actually work as an entrepreneur? And in the world we live in today, we have to face our fears. We have to face our doubts. We have to face our old stories. We have to face our new challenges. But more importantly, what is the key as you so brilliantly point out in your book, what is the key to making this journey more about flow than no? Let's take a short break. When we come back, we're going to give you lots of information about JD. But more importantly, for all of you out there, entrepreneurs or not, moms, dads, doesn't matter, people trying to figure out their own life, students that can't decide what their dissertations or what their papers are going to be about. You see, you know what's in your heart, but what does it take to take that next step to live at that moment? What if you start a business and invest in your business and your friends look at you and say, what network are you creating? What, what are you doing? You should like be retiring or something. What, what are you doing? What can JD tell us? about moving into the situations that will help you rise above as opposed to drowning in fear and doubt. Let's take a short break, everybody. We'll be right back. Hey, everybody, welcome back. Before we go, we're going to talk about no to flow, but then flow to no. We're going to talk about the whole flow no thing. <laughs> uh, and there are so many examples that we're going to be able to give you. And you've heard me talk about some of them because I've watched the Olympic trials. 
Um, I've watched comeback stories, you know, from Ms. Richardson, from Simone Biles. And if you think for one minute that these two, the fastest woman in the world, the 100 meter, okay, crazy, who didn't make the Olympics, uh, right, a bunch of years ago, what does she mean when she says, I'm not back, I'm better? What got her there? But before we do that, JD, before we go ahead, how do people find out about you? I've referenced your book. Uh, let's talk a little bit how people can connect with you, find out what you're up to, all of the above. Yeah, the be- easiest way is my website, www.intuitivebusinessconnections.com. From there, you can watch countless YouTube videos. You can see my Dawn of Intuition uh, shows under media. You can see my retreats. You can see coaching. Uh, really, you can learn all about me on my website. So www.intuitivebusinessconnections.com. So I'm going to make a statement to all of you out there, especially you entrepreneurs and especially the women entrepreneurs. I think in the world we live in, and I'm going to share why in a minute, and J.D., we talked about this during break. I do not believe that any of us will be able to achieve what we really want to achieve, really want to achieve without our intuition. I don't think it's possible in the world we live in today. There are too many moving parts, and they're going to move faster. So when they move that faster, and you try to keep up just simply from logic and linear actions, you will burn out. So intuition, is that the magic formula for eliminating burnout? I think it is. But let's talk about this from flow to no. I started this 20 years ago. I dialed the wrong phone number. And the minute I got behind a mic, I never felt anything like that. You know, I'm a kid that stuttered most of my teenage years. But the minute I got behind a mic and I started to interview people, people that I didn't know I was supposed to interview, I worked with a great producer. She never said to me, Jack Canfield will never be on your show. Deepak Chopra will never be on your show. Wayne Dyer will never be on your show. But I found these people inspirational. Why? Six months after paying a very large amount of money, twice, one to an internet station, 13 weeks of the internet for like $15,000 in 2003. Nobody was on the internet. Al Gore just invented it. Well, that's what he said. Six months after that, I'm picked up by an AM station. And I'm really loving it. Back then, we didn't have Zoom. It was literally microphone talking. No video. I was home. But it didn't make sense to the outside world. My partner, my friends, they're like, what are you doing paying that money? Honey, Pat, you've just been offered key consulting positions at the top consulting firms. Your research won awards. You are so sought after as a behavioral, cognitive, organizational psychologist. I mean, you keep getting, and you're saying no. And what? You have a show called Crust Busting Your Way to an Awesome Life, and that's your career, Pat? And I didn't hear it just once. I heard it over and over again. April 1st, that's April Fool's Day. You got it? Of 2004, I am delivering a workshop with my friend Bonnie. This is the irony of this. This is the flow to know. You ready? Live your greatest dream. A full day workshop. And we're by the end of the workshop, my right ankle was the size a little bit smaller than a soccer ball. I thought I kicked it. No, I was diagnosed with a mystery disease. There wasn't a name for it. I went through a year of testing. The bottom line is though, those jobs that I was offered, I couldn't do. I could do one thing, keep buying airtime and keep fulfilling my heart with joy. And intuitively I said, I wanna interview Dr. Wayne Dyer crust busting. I want to give Christina Aguilera a crust busting award. We're in her bio. This is all intuitively. Why? I don't have any background in this. I was following this. So here's the question. You can go from flow to no or on the edge of no. See, I could have walked away from this and I was about to. The universe said, no, you're not. 
we can find a way, but Einstein said it, we cannot solve the problem at the level it was created. And the only problem I had was how do I live my life stream? How do I follow my heart? Isn't that the core essence of intuition? Mm -hmm. And by yeah. the way, healed my body, found Dr. Darvish. Okay, crazy story. The angel lady says, I think you got a thyroid problem. I'm not kidding. This is true. I think she even said it on air. <laughs> I looked up T3. There were two doctors in my area. One was Dr. Darvish, Dr. Nusheen Darvish. I went to visit her. She said, the good news is it's not a thyroid problem. And then we went on a journey together. This is a highly intuitive, spiritual, top naturopath. She has, she and I uncovered this, but it was all intuition. And I want to say to people, and perhaps you can talk to this. We have healed our bodies for thousands and thousands of years intuitively. How the heck did we come up with herbal remedies? So what do you think of that story? I just, I love that. I love your living example. And I think more and more people need to hear this, that we have the power to heal. I also really like just highlighting that outside people don't know our path. Only we know our path. And I also strongly believe that we receive intuitive guidance through our body's wisdom. So your body was speaking to you loud and clear. It could not have been more clear. I don't even think you were able to take one step further on the path you were going. Look, your ankle, your literal foot would not let you move one inch closer to the direction you were heading. So that was a, you know, I, I, I don't want to live that. What you experienced, I don't want to live that. So this is why I'm constantly open to my intuition because I want to live a life with so much ease and joy. And I don't, and I believe that the life will stop you. So for example, maybe you know this, I mentioned this all the time, how I do annual 10 day silent retreats. I much rather sit in silence in peace, happy, hiking, eating healthy food, meditating 10 hours a day than being in the hospital for 10, for, for 10 days. And I have entrepreneur friends who are extremely uh, healthy and, but they don't stop. So life, they get into an accident and life literally stops them. And like, they're in a hospital for 10 days. I don't want that. I want to listen to my body's wisdom at the onset in immediately. And in order to do that, you know, to learn the flow and know I've learned to, to quiet my life, kind of close distractions, media for sure, mm -hmm. busy cities, you know, busy life. I really try and live it as simple as possible. And I'm very hypersensitive and very receptive to this little, this little inklings and knowledge. And for me, anytime I make decisions of the, you know, flow to know, I make decisions so quickly and so fast and so yeah. easily because I know my strong yes. And I know my strong no. And a lot of people, they know it. They go mm, that no, but then they are intuitive because intuition, I think is much faster than logic. But then they bypass the intuition and they go into their logical mind. But I don't. I know enough. I know I've, en I've had enough experiences in this lifetime so far um, to really go, oh, that's a no. And I honor that no. Or, oh, yes, that's a yes. And I do this for everything. Every, you know, a phone call. Who am I going to work with? Who am I going to hire? Who am I going to date? Who am I going to be friends with? Who am I going to spend the afternoon with? Like literally every moment. Is, is this a strong yes? Or is this a strong no? And um and I, and I really feel my, a lot of people, we receive intuition in different ways. I'm more of a clear audience. I hear messages, but you know, maybe for you, you may be more clear sentient, very clear empathic, where you feel it in your body. It's more of a knowing, a gut feeling. And there's not one way that's better than another, but it's no. knowing your way. It's knowing your way, how you receive guidance. Yes. So. I love this. I was coaching. I do career coaching. Uh, I don't do a lot of it, but I do a lot for women and especially women that are, you know, moving up the ladder. And I was on a call the other day and I don't think she'll mind me sharing this because we laughed about it at the end. And she's like, oh my gosh, I've got this opportunity. I love what I do, but I can't stand it anymore. And I said, well, what do you mean? She said, well, since COVID, we've they've had us set us remote home work from home locations i said 
it, this is odd because most people love working from home. She said, no, I don't want to do that anymore. I really want to go into the office, but my office is, I can't remember how far it was. I think it was driving distance, but it was a ways. And so I'm listening to her and I said, well, wait a minute, Jill. Why don't you go into the office Mondays or Fridays, Thursday and Friday, you leave Friday, you come home. Can't you go into the office two days a week and feel like you're around people and you're meet you're with your team? And you could hear a pin drop. And I said, mm-hmm. look, talk to your boss. I'm sure they'd love to have you in the office, right? This idea of you working from home, you never challenged because they think you want to work from home. They don't know that you don't, yeah. but yet you don't want to move. So you could hear a pin drop on the call. And it was, and I see it. I'm a seer. I see things. So as people talk, I see them. So I could see her talking and I, it just, I was so clear to me. It's like, hello, Jill. Go into a Thursday and Friday, stay at your sister's house who lives there get in a car, drive home Friday, you're home Friday, Saturday, Friday night, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, you're in the office, you're at your sister's. And she said, I never thought of that. Why don't we think of these things? Let's talk about this, because this is, this is what Hawkins talked about. You know, in power versus force, he talks about many, many things. Of course, he talks about addiction. And, you know, that's a whole different show. But but Hawkins talks about the fact that we can get insight that can help us rise on the levels of that scale. But we can't always do it ourselves. I mean, Hawkins is very clear. He's very clear about the fact that we need each other to help each other. I mean, this was a 15-minute call because in her heart, Jill knew I want to go into the office. I can't remember where it was. I just don't recollect the location because it never matters to me where that is. But the solution was there. She just couldn't see it. So sometimes you have to work with another person or a coach because as coaches, we are allowing, isn't that what you do? You're allowing for the insight that fear, doubt, something else is blocking out. But that's a perfect example of a solution. And, you know, before I could finish, she hung up on me. I did get a text from her later because she called her sister, who's got like a 5,000 square foot house or some ridiculous thing. And so the solution was called her boss, called her. The boss is like, oh, my gosh, we thought you'd never come back. Please, you don't even have to come back today. You see... She knew the answer, but she was blocked. Let's talk about this because sometimes we know the answer and we're blocked, don't we? Yes, exactly. We need help. Yeah, for sure. I can't wait to talk about this. (laughs) Let's talk about it now. As a coach, you've seen this over and over again. I'm not putting down people that can't get there because I've been there. I have five coaches. I have five coaches because I get stuck. What is it you find in the work you do that shines a light on a solution like that, that seems so obvious to you, but a person can't get there? Isn't that the core essence of why intuitive coaching is so powerful? Yes, I love this. This is why I think everyone needs a coach. Coaches need coaches. We all need coaches because we are so limited. We're just so in our reality and we don't, we we're speaking. Like I'm literally listening to people and literally reflecting back what they're saying. And they're like, I'm like, Oh, it's so clear. I'm like, and I just reflect back to them and they're like, well, I didn't know that. And they don't, they literally don't hear themselves speak because intuitively they know they say it. And for me, I have no, I just have an objective. I'm not I'm, I'm really objective about this. It doesn't affect my life. I'm just there to, to, to help and to be of service. And, 
and to kind of shine some light on some areas of kind of their authentic truth that they may not be acknowledging or really pushing down. And so, yeah, it's just so easy and clear. It's just like, oh, well, that's the, that would be an amazing solution. But also how does it resonate with you? Because I can throw many ideas out, but it still has to resonate with the person. And they may say yes, or they may, and I'm also often in coaching. First thing I try to teach them is learning to know their strong yes and their strong no. And then anything I say or anything anyone says after it becomes so much easier. So yeah, I think, um, yeah, it's, it's, it's so much easier when we have someone reflect back and Mm -hmm. mirror and mirror what we are actually saying. Mm -hmm. And it's so free. I mean, to just see the just exhilaration. I mean, just, it was like, it was like she won the lottery and yet couldn't get there herself. I want to ask you this question. I know you've got a lot going on. I know you're planning a lot of things and I want to spend a little time because you and I make decisions exactly the way we're talking about today. The entire technology we're building, the expansion of the network, the fact that we are, first of all, the only live streaming scheduled programming video company. And I, I, I had two people research this and I said, can you go out and find another company? They said, we got one in, in, in India, maybe. But they said, you're TV, but you're not on TV, but you act like TV. And I asked them that question. I said, you know why? I said, because we're expanding and growing. They said, why? They asked me why. And I said, because we are. But why? You see, they were asking me a question that they wanted a logical answer for. (laughs) I just know why. I know why we build technology that if we wanted to add 10 channels tomorrow, we can do it in a nanosecond. A membership, we could do it. But I said, you know, I'm just called to do it. That was the end. But I want to ask you this question. As you're planning, you understand the state of affairs. Where are you going? What are you planning? What is on your radar that excites you most when you're now thinking about your future? Yeah, it's a big question. I like to plan in my life. I have goals. And I also love surrendering to the mystery of life. I think that's really fun too. So I have goals. And if you asked me a week ago, I would say a whole list of goals. And today I'll have a new list of goals. So I am i don't even want to say anything right now because that will change. Like whoever listens to this and whenever this is live, it will be different. Um, I can share though, I feel like I'm on mission speaking more of my authentic truth, speaking about intuition. The retreats I held at my home, it was 15 years. It was a dream of 15 years. People are like, oh, they just think it was easy. And it's so interesting because last year I started my wellness retreats at my home. It was a reconnect your intuition wellness retreats where I created a really safe, quiet environment, yoga, meditation, coaching, hiking, swimming, vegetarian meals, a really, really fun way for people to reconnect to their inner joy. I just am a, I feel like I'm a space holder for this. And I automatically from zero to eight days, it was like, we're starting with eight days and people are like, well, JD, it's a bit intense. Like you didn't want to start with a weekend workshop. And I was like, well, no, that doesn't make sense. People want, people need a few, people need a week to really recenter and relax their nervous system. So for me, I just like start exactly how I want things. And it worked really well. It was my most lucrative summer ever because usually I'm a teacher and I usually take the summers off. So that worked really. And people like I had zero reviews last year and I had people flying in from Europe, all over Canada, all over the States. So I received some intuitive guidance I listened. I took action. I don't sit around and wait. I take I take the action necessary. And it was so easy. It was so easy. It, I, it was energy. I was working long days, but to find people and attract people was so easy. And so 
But now I'm more, if you ask me today, my goals, I'm more in, I want to be more in the flow of joy and fun <laughs> because I think that's a very high vibration to live. And it's very inspiring. I literally every day I'll like run into, I'll go walk my dog and I'll run into a neighbor and I'll tell them about my day. And most people are like, even my guests, they're like, JD, I want your life. And I'm like, I want my life too. So by me just living my joyful life, if that can inspire someone to tap into their life and go, hey, I want that much joy or that much freedom or that much, you know, fun. Awesome. Because that's, I think, the best way. I can't, I can't change anyone. I can just live my life. And if it helps someone, great. So I really want to, right now I have a retreat center, but I would really love to create a community of about three facilitators who live here and we live in community, we can mastermind, we can help each other. And then one weekend a month, we can hold our workshops. So now I want to kind of slim down my retreats actually to be like two day workshops yeah. and uh, have more people, maybe groups of like 12 people instead of four for two days and have more of an intense workshop. And then in the, in the month live in community with other uh, entrepreneur and re retreat facilitators. So that's my project for the fall. And yeah. we'll see if that manifests. <laughs> well, but this is why I asked the question because, you know, it's interesting what's happening, you know, for me, you, you know, a couple of seeds were planted and I thought, why aren't we doing more local events in Seattle, more holistic, more spiritual? Why, why isn't the Transformation Network creating a summit and inviting our hosts, inviting our guests, having different aspects of it, having workshops? See, so this is a thing that latched on to me now. All the fear around that. If I build it, will they come? You see, but when you get an idea and this doesn't go away, just like it's not going away for you, it kind of hangs on to you. And I'm asking the wrong questions. I am guiding myself from a fear as opposed to opening it up for the intuitive knowledge, wisdom, and solutions so that this manifests itself easily. And again, you know what's in your heart to do, and you will follow that pathway intuitively, as will I. Why do we do it? Because we know it works, don't we? Mm -hmm. I know what happens when I don't. It is painful when I don't follow my intuition. And I am reminded on a regular basis, Pat, you've been given insight, you know what to do. You may not know every, like you just described, you may not know every single bit of how to orchestrate it, but you're holding the space in your heart for it, aren't you? Yeah, yeah. I'm trusting, trusting. Exactly, yeah. Thank you for today. Um, again, one last question. I'd love to know your personal message, but again, would you tell people how they can find out more about you, please? And thank you so much for joining us here today. Yeah, it's such a pleasure speaking with you, Dr. Pat. I love, I love speaking with you. Yeah, for people who want to learn a little bit more about me uh, and my coaching packages, my retreats, all the Dawn of Intuition recordings I have on my website, I invite everyone to visit me at www.intuitivebusinessconnections.com. I love it. Personal message, what do you want to leave us with today? I just want to remind people that everyone has their own wisdom within. Slow down your life you know, turn off all of the noise and chaos around you and sit with yourself, ask the right questions. We all have the answers if we ask ourselves the right questions. And uh, of course, coaches can definitely help with that. Thank you so much. And for those of you out there, please go back and listen to this again. You know, each of the stories we shared just a little bit about what only, not only what we've learned about ourselves and our own journey, but what we've learned to share with you to help you. It's like I say all the time on this show, the show was originally crust busting and it was because I didn't want you to step in the potholes that I was stepping in at that point in time in my life. 
and not following intuition for me has led me to a giant pothole like New York City size potholes that are extremely damaging to your car. So take that metaphor, stay with that metaphor and get a hold of JD. Thank you so much for tuning us in and turning us on. Thank you.